one, one, one. Welcome to the 101, 101. When it comes to ratings, man, we number one. We number one. I get the truth, truth, then I give them the scoop. If anybody got a question, I give them the proof. Welcome to the 101. When it comes to ratings, man, we number one. We number one. I get the truth, truth, then I give them the scoop. If anybody got a question, I give them the proof. Welcome to one on one at Legacy Lake Sports Network. Hello, everybody. Darrell Owens, and welcome to episode 31 of One on One here on the Legacy Maker Sports Network. And here with me today, this is my guy, man. I, I, I've had an opportunity to see this man grow uh, through the last couple of years and just see him take a path that for guys like myself in the industry, if you say to yourself, man, can I do this? Can I really do this? Then you look at the man, Rudy Reyes, and you say, you know what? I can do this. And he is the host of the Rudy. The Rude Rude Dogs, the Rudy Rude Dog Show. God, I'm having a whole moment right now uh, <laughs> on Our Heart Radio, and, and he's done so much stuff. Rudy, how are you doing, my man? I am doing good. Just kind of, you know, I'm kind of hanging out and uh, COVID free. So good, good wishes there, and yeah. for those that aren't fast, fast prayers to those individuals. Otherwise, I'm I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me on. Uh, now, Rudy, you've done a little bit of everything. I, I'm, I, I'm I normally don't start the show off with this list of. But go ahead and give everybody a list of your uh, of, of the things you've been doing over the last couple of years because you've done quite uh, a bit of stuff over the last couple of years. Um, there's there there's a lot. I, I don't know if you have enough time, but you know, <laughs> between between having the Rude Dog Show and creating that about eight years ago, uh, I went from podcasting, recording three hour podcasts to writing for broadcast television. Uh, when the opportunity uh, arose, essentially, to move from Southern California to Cheyenne, Wyoming. Now, along the way, and for those, again, who, who've never been there, who've, who've, and I can guarantee you there are people who are listening and watching right now that can say, well, you know, I've never, I haven't been told no. Not yet. It's going to happen. It's a matter of time. But it's about your mindset, and it's about where you're at. And I'll give you a really good example of that. Uh, I had an interview with the L.A. Lakers to be their in-arena host, a guy at halftime, you know, calling things. Right you know, take your halftime shot, you know, Laker fans stand up, you know, those are the types of things that I, I heard no about. I went to go see the uh, Oakland Raiders for an interview. I was right. denied on that one. Uh, and, and so you, you kind of get accustomed, not that any no is easier than the next one, but you get accustomed to hearing the word no, because it's going to happen regardless of what you do in sales or in broadcast or uh, even in podcasting. If you're looking for people to help sponsor your show. Um, unless you're established, unless your label and branding and your marketing, and we can talk about that at some other point, mm -hmm. uh, is really on cue uh, and being able to really network. I, I don't know how much that can be overstated. And I think it's always being understated how much marketing and networking really plays a role in where you position yourself. But uh, I went from podcasting. I was a sports reporter covering the Wyoming Cowboys. Uh, then I went to work for NBC Universal as a uh, as an analyst. And then I went from there into uh, doing traffic and weather for iHeart. And now I'm working for CBS 47 um, out here in Fresno, California. Told you, told y'all, told y'all, a man of many, many talents, many, many talents. And I, I guess I, it's been a pleasure to watch it over the years, man. I just super proud of you just, just watching it. And I mean, I, I, we've had conversations on how where things started and to where they are now. So, man, like I said, I, I, I can't say it enough, man. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you. I, I, I certainly appreciate that. Um, I, I, I believe, you know, based on what I've looked at from you and your brand and your marketing and being able to get out there, um, you know, everybody, if, if, if you are listening or watching this and you're thinking there's no room for improvement and I'm on, I'm on course, you're wrong. There's right. always room for improvement. There's always a way to just be that much better, to become that much better, not only as an individual, but along the way as a professional. Yeah, you can always grow. You can always grow in this industry. It's all on how you how you do it, how you make it, if you're going to have the drive to do it. And that's I think that's a big thing. You know, um, you have to have the drive in this industry because if you go out there and like you do it for a little bit, ah, I'm no, you have, you have to, there's going to be, like you said, a lot of no's, a lot of, you know, times you're going to say, why am I doing this? Uh, but it's all about passion and it's all about heart in this thing. You, you have, you have to have it. If you don't have it, then it's, you might as well stop. <laughs> right. you, you might as well stop and, and go work somewhere else. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. I have, um, you know, and, and all, all the notes certainly kind of weigh on you 
after a while, to be quite right. honest with you. Uh, but, but when it's all said and done, it's about persevering and being able to get through all those obstacles, being able to really uh, understand your positioning, how you position yourself right. uh, and, and align yourself with a lot of positive people doing a lot of positive things. Um, and I, I could use, a, I could use, there's just so many examples that I can right. utilize, but um, you, you know, if, if you don't see an evolutionary shift in what you're trying to accomplish, then maybe going back to the drawing board and rethinking those processes may certainly find you in a lot better position uh, a lot sooner rather than later COVID or no COVID. I mean, to be quite honest with you, I mean, I, I know the numbers are there. I know they're staggering. Uh, but when it comes to having drive and having passion and, and what you do and how you do it, I'm not going to say that I haven't thought about quitting or stopping or what have you, because that right. has crossed my mind, but at the same token, I am way too stubborn for that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I am not, I'm not going to relinquish uh, what I've worked so hard for. And a lot of people can really attest to that. I've been in the industry a lot longer than I have. And right. I started this at the age of 40 years old. So it's not as if age defines you. What it does do is it gives you the maturity level to understand that there are things that you could be doing in order to, again, position yourself, mark yourself, brand yourself in such a way that gives a, a positive, thorough, uh, and and progressive light on what you're doing and hopefully inspire us to do the same thing. It, it's, it's so true. I mean, oh my God, that is so true. So I mean, it's all on you. Can you make it happen? Yes, you can. You just got to stay positive. Now, uh, Rudy, before we really get going in, that was, that was a nice little start. I, I'm not glad it's the first time I've done it that way, but I love it. I absolutely love it. We got to start, or I guess we have to at least do the check-in. So I want to check in on you, your family. How's everything been going through COVID? How have you been handling things? How have you been just adjusting to everything that we've been election? We've been, I mean, you know, un, you know, civil unrest, you name it. We've been through a lot in the last uh, seven or eight months. Just tell me how you've been handling things and how are you and your family? Well, you know, everything is good. I appreciate you asking. And I, I think the, the largest challenge, I, I, could, I can't speak for other people. Everybody has their own individual challenges and mm -hmm. individual setbacks. Um, and, and even people in, in radio, uh, in broadcast media in general, have lost their jobs. Um, I had the fortunate uh, ability when I was working for iHeart to be able to transmit from anywhere that I needed to be. And so that ultimately uh, kind of put a light over this otherwise casted shadow to say, you know what, if I can do it from anywhere, that means I can do it from where I'm from and that's California. So I, <laughs> you know, I say, you know, I, I, I may as well dabble in it. Uh, I certainly enjoy doing it for what it was. Uh, but the, the, the challenge is real. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat and say that it's been, you know, rainbows and lucky charms because it hasn't. <laughs> um, e even though I like vitamin D milk, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of low fat, but um, you know, when you, when you look at what's going on, I mean, I had the ability to go to the NFL draft because I was in Nevada right? and the draft was being held in downtown Las Vegas. Well, obviously that didn't happen. So it went virtual. There were talks about canceling it and it went virtual. And all of a sudden everybody uh, was chomping at the bit saying, well, is it going to be, well, you didn't say it was. And of course, Twitter is always filled with lots of colorful individuals to say the least but uh <laughs> one thing one thing for certain that, that i did know was that i was going to persevere through this regardless of what it was uh at the time going through some personal things and uh i just decided to continue doing what i'm doing and my podcast will never go away it will never stop it will never cease regardless of how old i get or maybe reversal of age or how young I get unless I can't reach the <laughs> microphone at six years old, but um, just, just a little Benjamin button. That's it. Yeah. Just, just, yeah, just, a, couple, <laughs> just a couple of, uh, you know, um, phone books that they still make those, you know, maybe I'll, I'll sit on a couple of those and kind of prop myself up. The microphone, but, uh, <laughs> hopefully don't get any print on my brand new pants. No, no, I can't uh, have that. Can't have uh, that. No, no, you can't do it. Stuff's iron and, and plat. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, <laughs> um, uh, it, it, it's been it, it's been a real adjustment just watching a lot of this a lot of these different types of things go on and a lot of that constitutes from what you see around you and uh, and, and the people who are suffering from it and people have lost their jobs from it and um, you know it's been it's been a pure blessing uh, going from working working at iHeart and I can't say I've always worked in broadcast media because that would be you know an obvious lie but at the same right. token 
um, you know, you have to all have to put food on the table. But at the end of the day, my passion, my drive uh, and my determination is to, you know, ultimately get to where I'm calling games for an NFL team. And that's kind of where, where my sights are set right now. Um, but COVID's making it a little bit impossible. So I'm finding alternate methods. Uh, you know, I've had guys on the show like Charles Woodson. And of course, you know my him guy. relatively well. My guy. Uh, <laughs> former Packer Raider, great. Um, I just had Kendrick Perkins on my show just the other day. Uh, you know, so, so I'm always diversifying who I, who I talk to, who I speak to, and really trying to just get the message out there that um, podcasting now is like the sexy thing to do. It wasn't yes. sexy eight years ago, but, it, no. but it's bringing back sexy now. Uh, <laughs> whether you're incorporating video with that sexiness, that's another story. But, right. uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's really about uh, just making the adjustments, the viable ones, and understand that approaching things in a hopeful, realistic manner uh, will keep you grounded and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see yourself through all the tough times. Yeah, it, this um, the pandemic definitely took a shift for us. I, I know here at the network because we, you know, we covered the Washington football team. You know, we covered UVA football, and that got taken away from us. You know, we had to we had to make an adjustment and said, okay, we're not at the games, but we still have to make sure that we're bringing forth uh, that coverage. You know, and it was a real challenge for us. It actually had to. You know, we had to we had to step our game up in different forms in order for us to still, uh, you know, prove our worth on that end. And I think that that was it was almost kind of needed, you know. So the, for us, it was like it was tough, you know, and it hurts because you're like, man, you're like, man, we were there, and we're now we're not. So it's just like we got to keep that keep that drive going until we get to that next level. But I guess you know, we'll, we'll see how those things are uh, playing out. Now, uh, Rudy, you know, obviously you you have a passion for sports, my man. But where did that passion for sports come from? What was that moment when you first said, man, this is what I love. This is what I need to do. When was that moment? Do you remember that moment when it hit you? Oh, I was, uh, I was watching the Steelers play. And at the time, I was a part of a Steeler bar. Uh, but I, not, not the bar itself, but the goings on inside of the bar, whether it's raffling, whether it's acquiring guys with merchandise, getting them right. in there, selling it. During normal times, not COVID times, normal times. And, and, and the epiphany just kind of struck me during a roundtable discussion with uh, a few other individuals talking about how, you know, social media is not going to help what we're trying to accomplish. And, right. you know, someone even said, you go on and do your job, Facebook boy, and all these other Ooh. things. And I thought to myself, oh, Facebook you are boy. Miss yeah, you are missing the boat on this big time. I said, because right. this is the next wave. This is, this is where it's at. Right. And if you're not on it, it's going to leave without you exactly and a story and ever since then it's been growing exponentially social media is at an all-time high right now especially yeah. with sports uh we're having very limited fan capacity at 25 percent in stadiums and, and right. i and i can totally understand what we're what you're saying in regards to having to shift gears and modify what you do but still stay driven and and and, and staying focused in, in what in what you're doing so i i definitely give kudos to you and what what you're still trying to accomplish um, I, I think at the end of the day, we all have to have a goal in mind. And that goal is to essentially uh, find out what our ending point is. Where, what does that look like? You know, right. not all of us are 20 years old. Not all of us are 25. Not all of us are millennials. <laughs> you know, some of us are a little bit on the older side, if you know what I'm saying. A little bit up there. A little bit up there. But it's the same token. You, you just have to be able to understand the end game and what the end point is, what you're trying to accomplish. So um, to hopefully answer your question, everything's been relatively tumultuous at times, but at the same token, uh, re regardless of how you're feeling one day, it's not gonna affect the rest of your life um, in regards to being told no. And well, we're not doing this right now. We're not doing that right now. You just have to become creative. And I think that that um, certainly has not been a lack thereof. I know there's a lot of uh, talent that have otherwise been on TV and on sports networks um, who who's had to make modifications who may have not been really deeply set on podcasting because they were so busy in the television uh, side of that. Um, it's just kind of an interesting paradigm to see. I wouldn't say backwards necessarily, but I think it's about branding. I think it's about personality right. uh, and, and about what you bring to the table in, in order to uh, separate yourself from just somebody else's pot. 
frame uh, and, and Facebook boy. That one bothers me a little bit because I, I just think that, you know, they missed out on it. They really don't know what that next wave is. I, I, you know, I wanted to go to school for mass communications. That was something that I really wanted to do. And I, and I, you know, I held off on it. I was nervous. I had to pay, you know, money back. I, you know, I was young. I, I just didn't know better, right. but social media gave me an opportunity to live out a dream that I wanted to do. Uh, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew what I needed to do. Social media gave me that. Well, it, it, it's not what it what was what it was given. It, it's it's how you earn the ability and the right. right to gain that positioning. You position yourself in such a way that allowed for you to be seen, to be noticed, to be heard. And I think that that is that can never be discounted as being something. Oh well. It was just given to me. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. Yeah, if, right. if, if everybody was doing it, then there wouldn't be any room for for anybody else. And it'd be super easy and everybody would have microphones and uh, mixers and everything else under the sun. And even my next door neighbor, everybody would have a, a podcast at the same time. But, you know, th the reality is, is that you are, you are, you are you, but you are also a part of your business of what you're trying to ascertain, right. what you're trying to achieve. And ultimately what you're trying to acquire, which is what access, right? So those who have access are the ones that are going to be able to get in. Um, I'll, I'll use a really good case in point. I missed the deadline to go to NFL media day in Miami, Florida. I missed the deadline to mm. put, apply for credentials to get in. And I had networked. So, so just, Oh man, I hustle hard. And all of a sudden I found that one connection and I said, uh, you know, hey, I missed a deadline by a couple of days. Is there anything that you can do? Can you look into it for me? I'd appreciate right. anything that you can do. And I had that one day. And during that day, it was a stand-up where there were no stand-ups because it's Radio Row. Everybody's right. sitting down. No one's doing stand-up interviews. It just wasn't, you know, it wasn't their thing. But I like to do things outside of the box. I'm not right. going to put myself there. So during that whole entire uh, situation, I had interviewed Justin Simmons, who was a free agent at the time before the Broncos uh, franchise tagged him. Mm -hmm. I had the ability to interview Terry Bradshaw. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the list goes on and on. Just the amount of people. I met Solomon Wilcox for the first time. Rod Woodson was there. Um, Michael Vick, I had a chance to talk to him, one of my favorite players. Uh, it, it was just it, Joe Buck. I mean, the, the list just goes on and on. I like, I like to do things outside of the box. And when you do that, when you think outside of the box and when you position yourself and net, network yourself into where you want to go and what right. you want to do, you know, networking, I, I, I cannot emphasize that enough. I cannot. It's, it's huge. Twitter, it's, it, it, it's, it's huge. <laughs> it absolutely is. It absolutely is. It's all about, again, it's about networking. It's about asking the right questions. Uh, right now I'm working on acquiring Chase Claypool. Uh, to join the Rude Dog Show, so mm. we'll see. We'll see. I'll keep my fingers crossed yeah, on that. Yeah, one. Yeah, that yeah. guy's a beast. Yes, he's looking really good right now. You got to give, got to give Pittsburgh where credit is due. They've always been able to find a way to 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 get that next receiver, build that next receiver. I mean, they haven't had a really like a bad run of bad, or, or you know, where they just struggled at the receiver position. I feel like they've always mm -hmm. found a way to grow. And look at him now, you know, James Washington comes along a little bit. Claypool, you draft him with third round, I believe. You get Claypool mm -hmm. there. I mean, so you get that, you know, you get those guys. And, of course, you already, you know, uh, you have Juju. Uh, and so, you know, like when Antonio Brown left, it was like, oh, boy, you know, Martavius Bryant, oh, what's going to be next? And then you get this next crop. Pittsburgh does it again. Watch out for yeah. Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the only undefeated team in the NFL right now. And, you know, to be honest with you, they're bound to lose one. Which one? We don't know. And we've seen the Bucks. As long as they get the New York Giants, you know, right <laughs> on Thursday night football last yeah. week, we've seen them or Monday night, excuse me. So we've seen them struggle heavily uh, against this. Uh, I, I don't even know. I don't know what possessed the Giants other than maybe trying to win another game. They were very close. If it wasn't for that uh, block by that, by that cornerback in the end zone, it would have been game over. You know, been a whole another thing. Second game of the season, but yeah. you know, it is what it is. It, it is um, what it is. So, so the Steelers are, are, are definitely bound to lose one, but which one? I guess that would be the bigger question. Um, yeah. Would I like to see the Steelers go to the Super Bowl? Well, of course. I'm a fan. <laughs> you know, I, why, why, why wouldn't I? But at the same token, you know, you, you have to be objective. Just because you're, you're a fan. I was, on a, I was on a podcast. I'm not going to name which one, but I was on a podcast 
where they're all fans of one specific team. I thought to myself, wait, what? Are we just talking about one team here? Are we, you know, are we being overly critical over one team? But why not just talk about the NFL yeah. as a whole? Let's talk about the COVID situations. Talk about injuries. Let's talk about dynamics of the game, not just one home review of a team that doesn't that's, quite that, qualify yeah, that's tough. That's and it tough. doesn't sound like a really good time so it, it doesn't because i mean you're just arguing either you're fussing all week about what the team did that's no fun i i, I like being able to toss a little anger at green bay and then go talk so talk about somebody else yeah I, I i'm good with that i'm good with that <laughs> right yeah yeah I mean, you gotta you gotta diversify you know at the end of the day it's really yeah. about enjoying yourself enjoying what you're doing uh, and, and, and right now, uh, speaking of continually progressing, I'm working on a few things right now. Um, I, I can't give the station away, but I'm working with, um, with the, with a station, uh, with, with Jay Schrader, but he knows who that is, or mm -hmm. if you don't, you should, he started, right. uh, for the Oakland, uh, LA Raiders and also quarterback for the Washington Redskins. So we're working on a radio show. Um, and of course, you know, the, the name should be the rude dog show and it's going to be the rude dog show so i just thought i'd throw that out there so we'll just, see just a little yeah, bit we'll just see. a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah just throw that out there just to let people know to be on the be on the tune in uh if, if that if that comes to fruition so well that's that's awesome dude that, that's that's amazing news and um you know i and we're picking back it off of that you know you said you started the show uh eight years ago but you know you've been building this brand i'm pretty sure maybe it's maybe a smidge longer than that but just tell us how you how you built this brand uh, and, 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 you know, the hard work and determination that you put into it, just let us know how you built your brand and, and got that start of journalism. It, it was, it was just really having a love for the game in, in general. And growing up, I was part of a championship baseball team. Um, I, man, I can, I can go back, but, uh, you know, it really boils down to those that are positive influences on your life. And those influences sometimes aren't seen at a young age and you only really recognize them until you get older. And then when you get older, it's, you know, you start thinking about those conversations and how much mm -hmm. of an impact they actually could play in the rest of your life. And at the age of 40, I was working at Starbucks at the time. I've mentioned, I've talked about this on the show a couple of times mm -hmm. in certain inferences. I worked at Starbucks as a manager and I woke up one day at, on my 40th birthday and say, you know what? I'm done. You know, I, I there's, there's something else. It's gotta be something else. It's, I gotta be able to do something else. <laughs> I got, yeah. I have got to. To be. yeah. It, 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 and, and, and there was, I just didn't know what that was. And so with that, I had the uh, ability to connect myself and network myself into being able to uh, be on an ESPN affiliate um, in Pittsburgh. And that enabled me to interview a lot, a lot of players uh, and everybody seemed to like the audio interviews. It wasn't a typed interview. I've done writing samples. I've done writing, I've written articles mm -hmm. and all that, but interviews are very, very different. So I, I built my brand from there and uh, it goes back to a nickname uh, that I was called by my best friend growing up. He used to just call me rude dog. And I thought to myself, Hmm, simple it's a show. Okay. I'm rude dog. Why not the Rude Dog, Rude Dog Show? show? It's I, easy. It just, you know, it just made sense for me. So I, um, I, I built it. I designed my own website. Uh, I'm always updating it and doing different things. I update at least once a year, changing format and themes and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. you just gotta, you just gotta do it. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so, so I built that through a lot of guests. Um, I've had Hall of Famers on. I've interviewed Al, Al Bernstein, and a lot of that is just passion and drive and not accepting the menial, not accepting just working at Starbucks, not just accepting uh, uh, doing things that are relatively arbitrary right. uh, to what your growth is, to where you really see yourself in. And like I said, I didn't find my voice until I was 40. My, my aunt who passed away from, from cancer uh, had actually told me one time, she said, Mihal, she says, find your voice because if you don't find your voice, it, you're gonna be lost. And as a young kid, as a young kid, when I say young, I mean young, like seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. We were forced to sing in front of our family for Christmas time, so we were given <laughs> the mic and shoved it in front of the spot. Here, take this. Yeah, uh, here. Uh, you're, uh, you're gonna be <laughs> up here, you're going to sing karaoke to this Christmas song, and you're going to so enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, and you will like it, or I will stick you in the corner when you're done. You know uh, that I kind got, of thing. I got, no, I got time for those problems. Like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like. Yes, you know, I want to go off in the wild blue yonder if I get it right. <laughs> so, 
So she was very, um, very instrumental in a lot of different ways, helping me uh, remember those conversations and really kind of helped me build my brand. And uh, I'll always remember her for always be thankful uh, for her, uh, for her words of wisdom, as, as well as understanding that it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen. This isn't a sham wow. This isn't a one bedroom apartment, you know, new um, ad on television. This is something that, that that's built from basically nothing uh, into something that I, I hope will showcase your talents. So for those that are listening out there, if you don't have a website showcasing your own talents and putting a little bit of money into it mm-hmm. uh, by hosting your audio and doing video and things of that nature, it, 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 it's not going to happen. It's just not yeah. going to happen. But, you know, as they say, uh, closed mouths don't get fed. So if you have questions, reach to other constituents, reach out, talk to them. Find out what what worked for them. Maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it won't, but you don't know until you ask. Right, and you and you never know. I mean, it, it's it's one of those industries like you we talked about. The networking part of it goes huge, and if you can't find those connections, uh, and, and and you know don't have that kind of game plan where you want to go with it, it you're going to be lost. It, it's just, you're just going to be lost in it. And I mean, and it, it's 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 a huge thing, and, and you know. You got. You can't be afraid to reach out to a Rudy Reyes or you know, you know anybody else in the industry. You got to be able to feel like you can talk to them. Now, you, sometimes you're not going to be always welcome because some people look at you as competition, but not everybody is that way. And I think that's a big thing that you have to take. You know, you're going to get some no's. You're going to get some yeses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think there's there's a lot of mysticism, and you actually raise a really good point because th- th- this industry is pretty darn cutthroat, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but what makes it a little bit easier, and I'm, I'm sure a humbling experience for those that have been in front of the television now doing podcasts from their own house, incorporating video mm-hmm. into what they do on a regular basis, it must be a humbling situation from going in front of the screen to going behind the screen, sort of, uh, yeah. without having this you know, captive audience. Now everybody can listen, everybody can hear, everybody can watch. Um, and, and again, it goes back to understanding that right now, these are, these are tough times, but you, you know what they say, tough times, um, the, the, the tougher sledding, the tougher you, you need to be in order to fight your way through. Yeah, um, I agree a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now we head to the portion of the show. My favorite portion This is my favorite portion of the show. Now we head to quick ones. This is the Rudy Reyes, the Rude Dog edition of quick ones here on one-on-ones. Rudy, are you ready for quick ones, my friend? Let's do this. All righty. So we, I'm going to give you a couple of them. Let's see how you rock and roll here. And they don't have to be one word answers. Me personally, I'm not a fan of the one word answer. I, <laughs> I, 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 I like a little bit explaining, but if you decide to go one word, I will not be mad at you, my friend. Sure. Fair enough. All righty. All right. Here we go. Favorite sports moment. Favorite sports moment being behind the scenes, uh, interviewing the Auburn uh, Tigers in a losing locker room during the uh, Elite Eight. Ooh, ooh, that's that had to be a tough. Was that was that last year? Year before last? That uh, was 2018. Is that, uh, that, that that's that Cavalier year, baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, but day, yes, that's it saying Wahoo Wah. Yep. That's the Wahoo Wah <laughs> right there. That's the Wahoo Wah. I'm not. I'm not. I, that had to be a tough one. That had to be a real tough one. That, that was real tough, but you know what was easier? Going to the winner's locker room and uh, interviewing them. That was great. That, 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 that I must <laughs> say had to be a pretty phenomenal thing. I mean, I got to see the guys, you know, pretty you know, much that whole season. It was a great year. Uh, and, yes. you know, be, I, I will say it was an honor to be able to just kind of say that I was there somewhat of the process in some form of the fashion. So I'll always be thankful for that. Uh, number I, I, two, absolutely. Now you've done a ton of interviews, so I have to know from you, what was your favorite interview? You know, one time I asked Tom Key for that, lead singer of Cinderella, when I first started out broadcasting. Uh-huh. If anybody knows who that guy is, if you haven't, he was a front man for, for Cinderella and he went on his own. Uh, I asked him who his favorite, who his least favorite band to tour with. And he says, man, I'm not going to tell you that. Uh, <laughs> this is a little bit different, though. It's a little bit different. So That's don't, hilarious. Don't get, don't get overly <laughs> excited about it. My favorite interview. Oh man, that's tough. Gosh, that's so that is a so tough difficult. One. Uh top oh, three. Give me top, three. Okay, Just give me three okay, of your favorites. Okay, give me okay, three of your top, favorites. Top three. Uh Jerome Bettis has to be number one. Okay. Um Charles Woodson will be my second. Woo, 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 woo. For for no other reasons, just because they are. Just uh and then um gosh. 
I would say in person, Coach Beeline uh, for ah, the Michigan Wolverines. Ah, okay. Uh, he was he was on court and uh, he walked by me. It wasn't really an interview per se. He walked by me. He says, oh, "You like that, don't you?" And I said, "Yeah, Coach, I do. I I, I like that a lot. Uh, I like it so much. I'm down here on the floor during their." Uh, cutting of the net ceremony which is very very cool to say at least i'm not a fan i'm, I'm not I, I don't have an ncaa basketball you know uh team, team that i per actually se. Yeah. root for but go blue in, in in that regard because they did what you know other teams just could not do as a part of that elite eight so yeah, kudos, crazy. kudos to them I but remember, in actual uh, an actual interview uh-huh Oh man, that's got uh, that. That's tough. Um, <laughs> I, I would say I would have to say Michael Vick, and the Vick, reason why okay. I say Michael Vick is because I asked him what his thoughts were about Lamar Jackson, and what he had to say. You can find us on the RudeDogShow.com. But what he what he said was to contextualize this for you, so that way you can understand. Mm-hmm. He says that Lamar Jackson will eventually be the MVP, which he was. Right. And oddly enough. Before I interviewed Michael Vick, I had interviewed Lamar Jackson when he was drafted by the Baltimore Ravens 32nd overall in the 2018 NFL draft. Right. And I told Lamar Jackson, of course, very nice, humble young man, uh, that he would eventually be the NFL MVP. So those two kind of solidified one another to the extent where you just kind of scratch your head and say, wow, that's crazy. That's just amazing. That's yeah, crazy. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool yeah. deal right there. And it's funny about Bay, uh, Bayham. I actually, when he was uh, at Richmond, I think I was a kid, and I remember like the first college basketball game I went to. I can't remember who they were playing. I want to. I think I want to say it was North Carolina, North Carolina Wilmington, when they were in the same conference. Mm-hmm. And I remember sitting in the nosebleeds at the Robin Center watching uh, Coach Beeline when he was there. And that's when they had like the team that went to. They went to the NCAAs that one year. I think it was like 96, and they were pretty decent. They, they, they made like they either won a game or so. I can't remember, but it's been, it's been a long time. But, yeah, yeah. I, that's, that's my memory of Coach B. Um, B- I, I remember that. I was like, God, I can't believe it's been that long. Very, 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 very nice guy. It, it, it's, it's a crying shame that uh, it didn't work out in, in Cleveland. Maybe, uh, maybe Michigan will want him back. Maybe. Oh, uh, maybe you, know, you never know. You, you, yeah. you never, you never know. know. I mean, Juwan <laughs> Howard, unless Juwan Howard jumps the ship, I, I think he, you know, he might have it uh, pretty comfortable right there for now. But we'll, we'll see in due but, time. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Exactly. All right, I'm about to, I'm about to mess with you on this one. I wanted you to give me your top three Pittsburgh Steelers of all time. That's, Ooh, that's, that's tough. tough. I'm gonna have that's to say Bean Joe. I'll, I'll, uh-huh. I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna start at my number one. I'll work my way to number three. Gotcha. Um, one would have to be Mean Joe Green for a lot of reasons, uh, not necessarily personal reasons, but because he did so much for the team. Um, drafted when people didn't think anything was possible, and he had Bill Nunn Jr., who was right. a complete architect, along with the great Chuck Knoll, uh, first to win four Super Bowl titles, helped a- a- acquire this absolute beast. Uh, with a motor that had been unseen by the Steelers since the inception in 33. So how can you not like Mean Joe Green, one of the most humble guys yeah. you probably ever have the chance to meet? I haven't met him yet, but I hope to uh, right. a lot sooner than, than later. Uh, number two, I would have to say, oh, man, ah, I would have to say <laughs> Troy Polamalu for a lot uh, of reasons. That's, that's, a that's, lot that's of that's reasons. Solid. That guy was a heartbreaker to so many, so many games. For so many seasons and at the very last training camp in 2014 when i was there in the 14 15th season that was his last training camp ever and that's when antonio brown was starting to come on so i'm gonna have to say troy palomalu just he was swift his hands were like mag- magnets to the ball uh, he knew where to be super athletic uh, uh, maybe not the hardest hitter on the planet, but a guy who just knew where he needed to be and was so flexible and got the job done and broke uh, uh, Flacco's heart a countless number of times. And, and, that's, and that means a lot. <laughs> that means a lot when you, put the da- when you put the dagger on that rival team. Ah, thank you so much. I appreciate you so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, we've we, we seen what happened at M&T when Ben Roethlisberger faced off the first time against – Lamar Jackson and ultimately the Steelers D just, you know, crushed just down too much. Just and, too and much. Ben, Ben, Ben didn't manage the game. He helped win the game along with right. guys like Juju Smith-Schuster, which I think is, 
uh, a, a rising star and uh, clearly loves receiving balls from Ben Roethlisberger. So um, let's that. see. Number three. Oh man, that's tough. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying not to be biased because I've interviewed a lot of them. <laughs> um, and, and they're, and, and they're all super, super nice, nice guys. Um, I've yet to have one actually decline and can't do it. Uh, very, very, very few. Tyson Alwa is a great guy. He's not, he's not number three for me. Um, I would have to say in this day and age, um, and, and, and I've actually had this guy on my show, this gentleman, this very giving um, guy, this loving, uh, caring, big, big bear, but a big beast on the field. It's got to be Cam Hayward. Um, ah. You know, his family, his mom, um, everybody, the, the, the Hayward house, they give so much back. Speaking of giving back, they actually gave back to Al the Allegheny County workers, the ones that are counting the ballots right now in Pennsylvania. Really? In Pittsburgh specifically, bought them dinner That's awesome. for tonight. Yeah, That's so awesome. Cam, Cam rounds out my my top three. I, I could go to 10, but three, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah they're going to need it because it's, uh, Cam Hayward. It's, a little bit, it's a little bit tough right there. So, I mean, they need all of the love and support they can get right now because it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of pressure. Well, there, there, oh. there's a lot of pressure, and to be quite honest with you, that, and yeah. that's why they went and acquired Avery Williamson in, in a trade from – from New York during the trade deadline mm -hmm. situation, which helps give them a lot more provided depth. So just in case Cam Hayward's not ready to go. And of course, when you look at the New York Jets, he goes from tragedy to possible oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. hero. <laughs> to go from 0 and 8 to 8 and 0, just like that, baby. Matt, Matt he probably was like, he's a, where am I going? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, you know, and, and, and I had to follow him on Instagram as he's standing there on a curb in his New York jet uniform and he would wear on the field with an umbrella and basically saying, where am I going next? You know, next, next stop steel city. So Ain't that for me was that. kind of a done deal. And, and, and I love being a part of breaking news like that. And social media obviously helps in that, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely dying to see what happens between a, uh, to a uh, negative team to a, a still perfect team in the Steelers. So we'll see what happens Sunday. <laughs> to a negative. That's great. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right. Last one on quick ones. Worst cereal you've ever tasted. Oh, gosh. Uh, bland, flavorless, <laughs> non-meaningful, dreading the spoon that goes in to pull it out of the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it would have to be would have to be the meal replacement for Lucky Charms, like the brown bag. Wow, wow! That, I know exactly what you're talking about. That uh, I can't, I can't, terrible. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'd, I'd rather just drink the milk. Forget the cereal, it's man. Like, just, can I just, just drink the, the milk? milk? He's like, do I have to eat the cereal in there? You, that's the only way you get paid. Oh, Even if I terrible. close my nose, man, I can close my nose to eat, eat that stuff. It's, no, it's, I'm not a fan. I, I you know, I, I grew up eating drinking living you know a, a mediocre lifestyle so when i had to eat it i didn't have a choice but now that i'm older it's like choice yeah i'm not eating it that's, that's my choice that's, thank you that's that great <laughs> that's great all right everybody that was the that was the rudy reyes edition of quick ones here on one-on-one -on -one. And, and rudy i before we get off of here man i i gotta say man i truly appreciate you coming on man uh, and when I when I said earlier that you're one of the people in this industry I look up to, I truly mean that because it when you're when I'm down and out, I can always look and say, look what Rudy's done, man. Like Rudy, Rudy never gave up, and I can't I can't give up neither. Rudy never gave up. I can't neither. So I, I truly appreciate you for that, brother. Sure. And of course, uh, before we get off, get off. I need to know, man, any special projects you got going on, and I need to know that legacy. Of course, you know, a legacy, make got to know that legacy. What type of legacy do you want to leave in sports journalism? Well, you know, right now what I'm what I'm looking at, again, is is uh, getting that that show hopefully coming to fruition and, and really uh, kind of cementing my, my place in broadcast ready because initially they didn't want anything to do with me because of the market that I was in. Uh, right. And then that's when television was so viable and, 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 and warming and, and wanted me there. Right. Um, um, uh, I'm, I'm working on, I'm working on just doing more interviews, more conversations, kind of similar to this one. Right. Um, and then, um, gosh, I can't let the other one out of the bag yet. Uh, I understand. 
not not I'm not there yet. Break, I'm look, not there. You don't, don't have to break that news too soon. <laughs> look, look, you don't have you don't have to break that news on one on one. Just tag me in it later. There you go. Okay, there you go. There you go. I got you. I got you. Yeah. I can respect yeah, that, brother. No I can respect that. I, I will certainly do that. As far as a legacy is concerned, you know, I, 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 I've always said this, that if you have a passion for what you do, you'll end up getting paid for it. And right. I really, truly believe that. I, I, I strongly and firmly believe that. But moreover, when you look at, when you look at what you've done, think about the mistakes that you made along the way. And, uh, and in that, think about the individuals, think about the people, uh, think about the ones that you helped along the way. You may right. not have thought that it was, it was a big deal to you, but it was a bigger deal to them. Right. And when it's all said and done at the end of the day, when, when you pass on and, and you pass the baton, metaphorically speaking to somebody else, and all those people are standing in line to say nice things about you, it's going to feel really good because right. if you're only in it for yourself, no one's going to be there to talk about you. And that's where it ends. Whereas others can learn from what you've done and how you've been able to help inspire them and, and give them of your own free time with podcasts or website suggestions, or um, just maybe helping their spirits understand uh, that they can do better, that they can do more and to diversify what they do in order to accomplish their goal. Big facts, Rudy. That I, is I, my I, legacy. That's big time. <laughs> that Rudy, that's as big time as it can get right there. Ladies and gentlemen, this Thank has you. been episode 31 of one on ones here on the Legacy Maker Sports Network. Rudy Reyes, the man that is in charge of the Rude Dog Show. Man, I tell you, brother, I love you. I, and I and I truly appreciate you for coming on, man. And good luck to you in the future. You know, I'm gonna be Thank following you. you, man. Keep rocking and rolling. <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you so much. If you guys want to follow, follow at Rude Dog Reyes on Twitter. I yes. go to RudeDogShow.com for a lot of the wonderful updates that I'll have uh, coming your direction real soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then on top of it, um, Instagram, Rudy R. Reyes. Um, gosh, I'm kind of everywhere. Um, he is. He's, he's, he's a renaissance man. He's got a little bit of everything uh, going uh, on. You, <laughs> you have to. It's all, it's all about the splash play. So uh, Exactly. You know, if you guys want sports conversation, I usually like tweeting during during games. So just kind of throwing that out there. But thanks a lot for having me on, Daryl. I really appreciate it. I I wish you the best on what you do. Uh, And if there's anything you ever need um, for me and I can help, I'd be glad to do it. No problem. I I appreciate you, brother. Once again, everybody, that's Rudy Reyes. Episode 31 of One on Ones here on the Legacy Mega Sports Network. I'm Daryl Lawrence, Rudy Reyes. Until next time. One, one, one. One, 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 one. Welcome to the one on one, one on one. When it comes to ratings, man, we number one. We number one. I get the truth, truth. Then I give them the scoop. If anybody got a question, I give them the proof. Welcome to the one on one, one on 